the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Your Eminence, Cardinal Lenton, your visit to the diocese of your early years of formation and your dear family's continued residence is an occasion of great joy and blessing to us all. As you can tell, the news media are eager to share your story with all of the people of our state of New Hampshire. For us, this too is a great blessing. You are bringing the joy of the gospel to believers and non-believers, to the body of Christ, which is the church, and to all people of goodwill. You bring the joy of community and the blessing of faith. You bring the very best of the blessings of family life. Our state, and indeed our nation benefit from your visit. Your very presence brings us into closer proximity to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who has captured the hearts and imaginations of people throughout the world. And as you work closely with our Holy Father, you help us to share in a special way his message of the joy of the gospel. You have come to visit your dear family and your dear family of the church in Manchester. We thank you and wish you a most happy reunion. We, for our part, are eager to return the great favor you have shown us. We look forward with great eagerness and anticipation to joining you in the great city of Quebec this July, as we make our great pilgrimage of faith to celebrate with you the 350th anniversary of the founding of the Cathedral Parish of Notre Dame de Quebec. Thus far, Your Eminence, there are over 400 pilgrims, and we expect many, many more. We are ready to profess our faith and our gratitude for the wonderful ancestral heritage that has been entrusted to us. We are eager to approach the holy door which has pierced the side of your cathedral so that we might partake with you the mercy that flowed from the pierced side of Christ. We are eager to profess our faith and renew our commitment to the gospel. And we are eager to bring to your people in Quebec this living sign of hope and gratitude and spiritual joy. Your Eminence, we know that you are committed to caring for your people and among them very especially those most in need. Therefore, the Diocese of Manchester asks you to accept the gift that has been given to you. As a pledge of our support to assist you in your work. And I also invite your host, Monsignor Frontiero, Rector of the Cathedral, here in this parish today, to take up a special collection after communion today. <laughs> okay, <Tom. laughs> so that those with whom you offer this Mass today may also offer their appreciation for the task you undertake as the Chief Shepherd of the Archdiocese of Quebec. Such generosity for the sake of those most in need would cause Pope Francis to smile broadly and those who benefit from such gifts to benefit greatly. 
Your Eminence, we welcome you home here in Manchester. But when you return to your wonderful people in Canada, tell your people how much we love you and our brothers and sisters in Quebec. Tell them to wait for us. July is not too far away. Tell them we do not forget. Tell them we remember with gratitude. Tell them that this is the joy of the gospel. Tell them we are one. God bless you in your apostolic ministry, your eminence, and may God be glorified. <coughs> Amen. I feel so awkward sitting in your chair. <laughs> I'll give it back right after. <laughs> Thank you for those very, very kind words. Uh, you make me feel so welcome here. <coughs> Diocese I love with all my heart of Manchester, where I spent 11 years of my early years, like you mentioned, where I've received so much from so many of the people, of the clergy, of the religious, of so many lay people that helped me grow in my faith, and I am I'm honored to accept your invitation to come pray with you in your cathedral. And yes, we will be waiting for you in all the dioceses in July in Quebec. Thank you. And thank you also. I'm so happy that uh, Bishop John McCormick is with us this morning to pray again. Abbot Mark Cooper from St. Anson, where I had the privilege to study not long enough. I should have studied more, but I did study <laughs> some of it. And thank you to Monsignor Frontiero Tony for your hospitality here on And thank you for coming to pray with us this morning. Now, we've come to celebrate our faith. We've come to listen to God's word. We've come to be restored and renewed. So let's stand. And let us pray. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our loneliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of all the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not?
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proved his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritan. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, 
give me a drink. You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern, and drank from it himself, with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or to have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain. But you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one who called the Christ, when he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you did not know. So the disciples said to one another, could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me, and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. For here is the saying, the saying is verified, that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work. And you are sharing in the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is true, 
the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. seated in case this is long. <laughs> I'm very privileged this morning. Bishop Lovato has allowed me to use the crozier in his cathedral. And the crozier I am using for this celebration belongs to the first bishop of Manchester many, many years ago, Bishop Bradley. As you very well know, the closure is one of the important symbols of a bishop that reminds him that he needs to be a good shepherd, to shepherd the people of God that are entrusted to him. Have you ever noticed how a bishop walks with a closure? It's never behind him or just next to him. It's always in front of him. Because it can also remind us that it's Jesus, the Good Shepherd, that we walk behind Him. He walks in front of us, He leads us, He brings us a life, a abundant life. And it is our duty for us bishops to walk behind Him, to walk with Him, and let Him, through His Spirit, lead us so we can lead God's people. But it is also all our duty, is it not, for all of us to let Jesus lead our lives. And that is what we do every time we meet. When we come to celebrate as a family, as God's family, at Holy Mass every Sunday, we come to hear the God's word, and let him orient our lives, guide us, help us make the right decisions, showing us the way, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. In this third Sunday of Lent, the Lord wants to guide us once again. We need direction. The word of God we've just heard is beautiful once again, as always. It can bring us to a much deeper relationship with the Lord. Help us be rooted in Christ so that we can continue our journey, our pilgrimage through life. After the passing of the Red Sea, the people of Israel guided by Moses, that's what we heard in the first reading, began the crossing of the desert on their way to the promised land. But a small glitch suddenly arises during their travels. Water becomes scarce. And how can you go on in the desert without water? There's no life without water. That's what we've just heard. In the wilderness, the people thirsted for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. 
strike the rock, the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Well, Moses did just as the Lord ordered. And the people of Israel witnessed another of the many manifestations of God's presence in their midst. Their thirst was quenched. The water that comes out of the rock in response to Moses' intercession already announces the waters of salvation that flows from the transpierced side of the one who is the true rock, the one who truly quenches our thirst, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. No wonder we take pleasure in following him. No wonder we take his word seriously, because we know where he leads us, where Jesus Christ leads his people, is to truth, to happiness, to love, and to abundant life. This very long journey in the desert announces that there is only one who can satisfy our needs, quench our thirst, the Lord, the one who frees his people, from slavery in Egypt. The water he gives is no longer just water taken from a rock or a well, but the water of the Holy Spirit who opens our lives to eternal life. Speaking of well, that brings us to the gospel. We see Jesus sitting at Jacob's well and he is thirsty that day. It is midday, the hottest time of the day. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. We usually think of the Lord as the one giving out water, counsel, healing, forgiveness. But here in this page of the gospel, he is the one who is thirsty. What does the Lord thirst for, not just water from a well. He thirsts to see that woman experience truth and love, the love that comes from God and the truth that opens up to freedom in abundant life. And so Jesus engages conversation with the Samaritan woman in a very respectful way. He leads her to see that the five husbands she had in the past and the sixth one she is with now who is not her husband have not filled her heart with the love she yearns for. Five and one that's six. In the Bible, that's the number of imperfection. There's something missing if you're only at six. Perfection is seven. The seven days of creation, the seven sacraments, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Who will be the seventh? The only one that can be her true spouse, Jesus Christ. In Jesus, the hour of salvation has arrived. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But the one who drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. My friends, that's about as good as it gets. A spring of water gushing up to eternal life. What good news the gospel is for all of us, for all of humanity. We continue, you and me, all of humanity, we continue in so many ways to wander in the desert, searching for happiness, for love, for abundant life for peace in our hearts. Sometimes, complaining like the people of Israel, 
And what is sad but unfortunately true is that we often search in places where we will never find what we are longing for. Since God the Father sent his only Son into the world, since Jesus Christ became man, since his death and resurrection, we no longer need to search on mountain tops or knock on rocks to quench our thirst. We look to Jesus, and in him we encounter God's saving and abundant love. As we become his disciples, we experience new life. As we walk with the church, the community of disciples of Jesus Christ, we grow in holiness and we learn what true and lasting happiness is all about. Jesus reaches out to a Samaritan woman to bring her to abundant life. Today, once again, Jesus does the same with us, inviting us to come to Him. And as the Pope writes in his last apostolic exhortation in paragraph 3, inviting us to renew our personal encounter with Jesus Christ, he adds this small phrase, which is just like today's gospel. If you haven't got the strength to go to him, you can be sure he'll come to you with open arms to welcome you. Dear friends, that is also what we are called to do in our daily life. Like Jesus, like the apostles, like so many men and women who have embraced the faith who have become disciples and apostles of Jesus Christ, we too are sent out to today's world to sit at the well next to all those who thirst for love, for truth, for happiness, for hope, for peace. We're the ones who God sends out at the many wells around us where people need to be welcomed and listened to and brought to the spouse, presented to the only one who can fill their hearts, Jesus Christ. St. Paul reminds us in the second reading that this hope is not a human conquest. It is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul writes, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Those of us who are baptized have already received this amazing gift. We were immersed in God's love, reconciled in Jesus Christ, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us never forget who we are. God's beloved children and what we are called to nothing less than holiness the Lenten season is an extraordinary time to rediscover the beauty of our baptism sometimes I feel baptism the baptism we receive is still like a gift a beautiful gift that we haven't finished unpacking <laughs> that we haven't finished to discover. There's more in the bottom of the box. There's more to discover. There's more that God has in store for us. Brothers and sisters, as we continue our pilgrimage in this earthly life, and sometimes experience thirst and hunger as we journey through the deserts of life, let us never forget that Jesus is waiting for us at the well. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for me. Like the Samaritan woman, he wants to lead us to truth and love. They go together. We still have a few weeks before we enter Holy Week. 
the Easter season. Will you consider, will you seriously consider taking more time with the Lord to listen to him, to listen to his word, so your life can be deeply rooted in abundant lives? Will you consider walking behind him, with him, and let him lead you? Maybe to places that you cannot reach by yourself. Maybe to places in your life where you've tried and struggled on your own. Let the Lord lead you. Let us thank the Lord, my friends, for our church, for our families, for our parish communities that help us walk together, supporting each other, praying for each other, and encouraging all those we need. When autumn comes around and shakes up our tree and we lose our leaves sometimes, we fear not because we are rooted in Jesus Christ, the one who feeds our hearts and souls and brings us to new life. That is the Paschal mystery we receive today at the altar. May Jesus Christ be for all of us the source of new and eternal life today and always. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God from my name, unsustainable with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in time to forgive him and became him. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again in the dead, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the Father. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. It is not through our own efforts, but only through faith that we are transformed. Let us humbly seek to be perfected in faith as we come before the Lord in prayer. For Francis R. Pope, Peter R. Bishop, Simon Gerard Lenoir, and all leaders of the church, 
that through their prayers, efforts, and example, they may bring hope and healing to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the Holy Catholic Church, that we seek Christ in his living water and his sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who work on behalf of justice, peace, and alleviating poverty throughout the world will be strengthened in their work and drink living water. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For catechumens, candidates, and elect, that they be strengthened in their desire for unity with the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick and those near death, and for their caregivers, that they know the compassionate love of Jesus. Lord, hear our discouraged in their efforts to promote the dignity of human life. May the Lord give them a hope that sustains them in their mission, and the grace to renew their spirits. We pray to you. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, especially the Muhammad Shikin, who died this week, that they will experience now the fullness of the glory of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the people who perish from the mistake of God, we pray to you. Lord, hear our prayers. And for those intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. O oh God, transform us through our faith so that we may be ready to serve you and your people. Give us living water that we may show forth your love to those around us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
During the preparation of the gifts, please join in singing, I Heard the Voice of Jesus, found at number 466.
rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. <coughs> Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of the parish family of the St. Joseph's Cathedral, I'd like to reiterate the warm and loving welcome of Bishop Labashi to your eminence and to your parents, your family, and all those who have gathered with you today, all the visitors who have come here from far and wide to be with us for this celebration. Just a typical Sunday Mass at the cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the ordinary. And you're always welcome here. Come often. And on behalf of the family of the cathedral, We'd like to invite you to a nice reception that's been prepared downstairs where you can meet the Cardinal personally. The daughters of Isabella here have worked hard to prepare a beautiful light reception for us down in the church hall, which you can arrive at by going down, uh, down the stairs. Also, as Bishop Labashi mentioned, the pilgrimage in July, I believe there's a representative out in the vestibule of the church who will assist you if you'd like to make a reservation for that pilgrimage, and we encourage you to do so if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your participation, for the music and choir ministry that helped us pray and praise the Lord today for all the servers, lectors, everyone who's help celebrate this ordinary Sunday in the cathedral. <laughs> and you are most welcome in Quebec. Bishop Labashi and all the others who would like to come. It will be a joy for us and our people to welcome you. So many of you have roots in Quebec. Well, know that you have brothers and sisters that love you, that pray for you, and that come and that will welcome you when you decide to come. Hopefully this year, during the Jubilee year. Uh, please pray for me. Pray for the ministry that the Lord has asked me to accomplish, so that I may be a faithful and generous servant to the Holy Father and to the Church and as Archbishop of Quebec. I am deeply touched by this celebration and by Bishop Labashi's invitation to come preside in this cathedral the holy sacrifice of the man and have shared the word of God with you. We continue our journey knowing that we all walk behind him, the Lord, the giver of life. And as his disciples, we ask him to bless us so we can become missionaries in today's world. Bishop Labashi, if you will join me in giving the blessing, you are the bishop of these people. And to help you practice for your July pilgrimage will bless the people in French. <laughs> Le Seigneur soit avec vous. Que Dieu tout puissant vous bénisse. Le Père, le Fils et le Saint Esprit. The glory of these 40 days, found at number 102. 